evening. That was a wonderful singing. Now you got to listen to me. So, so we'll we'll get through this again. Thanks to you and Will and Thomas for a good job. Yes. Uh, tonight I would sort of I appreciate Trey asking, and I'm humbled that he asked me to speak. I, I was going to do this on a Wednesday night, and of course he asked me last Sunday if I could do it tonight. And he said, "Now this singing night, so you'll just still do a five-minute lesson." I can handle a five-minute lesson, so that's, that's all right. Uh, what I'd like to talk to you about tonight, habits. Habits of studying the Bible and getting closer to God. Uh, turn with me to Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1. In this section is the peril of not progressing. Therefore, leaving the discussion of the elementary principles of Christ, let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance, from dead works and the faith towards God. Verse 2, it says, of the doctrine of baptism, of laying on one of hands and resurrection of the dead and of the eternal judgment. And then, I'm going to read the footnote of the Bible here. Certain elementary teachings are essential for all believers to understand. Those basics include the importance of faith, the foolishness of trying to be saved by good works, the meaning of baptism and spiritual gifts, and facts of resurre- resurrection to go on to maturity understanding we need to move beyond but not away from the elementary teachings to a more complete understanding of the faith I'd like to tell you a little story of a boy who fell out of the bed when his mom asked him what happened he answered, he answered I do not know I guess I stayed too close to where I got in easy to do the same with our faith Tension to just to stay where we got in and never move. Pick a time in the not too distant past, a year or two ago, or even the first of the first of the year. Now ask yourself a few questions. How does your prayer life today compare with then? How about your giving? Have both the amount and the joy increased? What about your church loyalty? Can you tell you've grown? And Bible study. Are you learning to learn? Don't make the mistake of the little boy. Don't stay too close to where you got in. It's risky resting on the edge. And at this point, you know, you sort of talk about getting complacent. I'm, I'm guilty of it. We are, you know, I get ready to go to work and, and it, it, talking about it earlier today, how time flies. You get ready to go to work on Monday, then the next thing you know it's Friday, and then the weekend is here, the weekend is gone. And we sort of get complacent in the things that we do. This was in the church bulletin several months ago, and I've seen it also in a magazine. It says, take time. Take time to think. It is the source of power. Take time to play. It is the secret of perpetual youth. Take time to read. It is the fountain of wisdom. Take time to pray. the greatest power on earth. Take time to love and be loved. It is a God-given privilege. Take time to be friendly. Road to happiness. Take time to laugh, it is the music of the soul. Take time to give, too short a day to be careful. Take time to work, it is the price of success. Take time to show appreciation, it is the frosting on the cake of life. Take time to dream, pitching your wagon to the star. Take time to be charitable, to to heaven. How do we improve our habits? Growing is a command. Growing in knowledge, 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 17 through 18. You therefore, beloved, since you know this beforehand, be aware, lest you fall from your own steadfastness, being led away with the error of the wicked, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Christ. Him be the glory both now and forever. Peter concludes this brief letter as he begins by urging his readers to grow in grace and knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Get to know him better and better. This is the most important step in refuting false teachers. No matter where we are in our spiritual journey, no matter how mature we are in our faith, faith is simple world always will challenge our faith. We still have much room for growth. If every day we find some way to draw closer to Christ, we will be prepared to stand for the truth in any and all circumstances. We also grow by searching the scriptures. Acts 17, chapter 10, uh, Acts chapter 17, verses 10 through 11. Then the brethren immediately sent Paul and Silas away by night to Berea. Where they arrived, they went into the synagogue to the Jews. These were, these were more
more than fair minded than those in Thessalonica, and that they received the word with all readiness and searched the scriptures daily to find out whether these things were so. How do you evaluate sermons and teachings? People in Berea opened the scriptures for themselves and searched for truth to verify or disprove the message they heard. Always compare what you hear with what the Bible says. A preacher or teacher who gives God's true message will never contradict explain away anything in God's word. Why should a Christian study? Faith comes from the word. Romans 10, verses 17. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We also do it. Why a Christian should study is to be saved eternally. James chapter 1, verses 21. Therefore lay aside all filthiness, overflow of wickedness, Receive the meekness, planted word, able to save your souls. James advises us to get rid of all that is wrong in our lives and receive with meekness the salvation message we have received from the planted word, because it alone can save us. We need to also prepare for judgment. In John chapter 12, verses 48, He who rejects me and does not receive my words has that which judges him. The word that I have spoken will judge him in the last day. The purpose of Jesus' first mission on earth was not to judge them, but to show them the way to find salvation and eternal life. When he comes again, one of his main purposes is to judge people how they lived on earth. Christ's words that we would not accept and obey will condemn us. On that day of judgment, those who accepted Jesus and lived his way will be raised to eternal life, and those who have rejected Jesus and have lived any way they please will face eternal punishment. Decide which side you will be on, but the consequences of your decision last forever. Learn the right way. Look at Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 through 17. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God, profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction, for righteousness, that the man, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. The whole Bible is God's inspired word. How does it and trustworthy, we should read it and apply it to our lives. The Bible is our standard for testing everything else. It is our safeguard against false teaching, source of guidance for us to It's our only source of knowledge of what we can say. God wants to show you what is with you to live for Him. How much time in God's Word? Read it regularly, cover God's truth. Life and faith. Develop a plan for reading the whole Bible, not just familiar passages. Another reason why Christians should study is to keep from falling away. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 11. Now all things have happened to them as examples. They were written for an admission upon which the ends of the ages have come. Today's pressures make it easy to ignore or forget the lessons of the past. Paul cautions us to remember the lessons that the Israelites learned about God, so we have to avoid repeating their errors. The key to remembering is to study the Bible regularly, regularly so that the lessons remind us of how God wants us to live. We need not repeat their mistakes. We study the Bible also to receive understanding. In Psalms 119, 104, through your precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. God's word makes us wise, wiser than our enemy, wiser than any teacher nor it. True wisdom goes beyond a man's knowledge, applying knowledge in a life-changing way. Intelligent or experienced people are not necessarily wise. Wisdom comes from allowing what God teaches us to guide us. Another way we improve our habits is the way we study. Classes or sermons. John mentioned this a couple of Wednesday, Wednesday nights ago that how much he gets out of doing sermons or taking lessons. You really do get a lot. I get a lot of information from it. I learn a lot, and it gets to thinking of questions. Um, ways of studying is reading good material. How many of us have magazines that we subscribe to, and how many of those are Christian magazines or Christian books? I'm listening to older ones. Titus chapter 2, verses 4 through 5. They that admonish the young women to love their husbands, to love their children, be discreet, homemakers, good, obedient to their own husbands, and to the word of God may not be blasphemed. Women who were not Christians were to learn how to have harmony in the home by watching older women being Christians sometimes. We have the same need today. 
younger wives and mothers should learn to live in Laying their husbands, loving their husbands, caring for their children, serving extraordinary women of God. If you are the age or position where people look up to you, make sure that your example is motivating younger believers to live in the way that honors God. That also applies to young men and older men. Private study. Y'all compile our notes. Files and notebooks. I know most people mark stuff in their Bibles and always compile your notes. I reference study Bibles. There's always commentaries or study, study Bibles or study aids to help you. These are just a few ways that we can improve our habits. We study our Bible on a regular basis. Knowledge and wisdom will come to us. Again, how can you improve your habits to God? If someone has a need for repentance or wants to be baptized in Christ, you have that opportunity as we stand and sing. God and renew right spirit within me create in me a clean heart oh God and renew right spirit within me cast me not away from your presence O Lord and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of my salvation, and renew a right spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart, O God. And renew a right spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart, O God. And renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, O Lord, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of my salvation, and renew a right spirit within me. Thank you for that good lesson, Barry. We thank all of you for being here tonight. If you were unable to partake of the Lord's Supper this morning, it's been prepared in the library. You may go there now or during the singing of this last song and you'll be served. Before our additional announcements and our closing prayer, we'll sing number 734. Meet you in the morning. I will meet you in the morning by the bright river side when all sorrow has drifted away. I'll be standing at the portals when the gates open wide at the close of life's long dreary day. I'll meet you in the morning, meet you in the morning. How do you do? How do you do? Sit down by the river, sit down by the river, rapture, our old acquaintance renew. Know me in the morning, know me in the morning, miles that I wear, miles that I wear. Meet you in the morning, meet you in the morning. The city built, that city built four square. I will meet you in the morning at the end of the way on the streets of that city of gold where we all can be together and be happy for a while the years and the ages shall roll. I'll meet you in the morning, 
Meet you in the morning. How do you do? How do you do? Sit down by the river. Sit down by the river. Rapture, our old acquaintance renew. Know me in the morning. Know me in the morning. Smiles that I wear. Smiles that I wear. Meet you in the morning. Meet you in the morning. City, city built that city built for square.